Coming up on Doctype, is your website a loud, incoherent mess? Learn how to iron out the wrinkles with some information hierarchy. Then, learn how to detect what features are available in your browser with Modernizer. So take a break from the LOL cats and fail dogs, because we're about to hit you with some knowledge. It's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by the Front End Design Conference and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that doesn't know the difference between JavaScript and a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to make you the emperor of the interwebs. Okay, so today Apple announced uh, a couple things. First, they announced iPhone OS 4, and they also announced WebKit 2. So the thing that's interesting about iPhone OS 4 actually are the iAds, which is Apple's new advertising platform. The interesting thing about it is that it's going to be using HTML5. Yeah, so they showed some uh, demonstrations of the ads, uh, Toy Story and whatnot, and so they're using you know all the cool you know WebKit transitions, HTML video, all the interactions. So it feels like really you know engaging ad, and it's all done through WebKit, so they can just you know, pop up the ad inside of the app without you having to go away from it. So I think it's really cool that Apple is embracing all the cool features in HTML5 and making Mobile Safari such a great browser for it. Definitely. Uh, also today, uh, Apple announced uh, WebKit 2, or the WebKit oh. team announced yeah. WebKit 2. It was kind of quiet. There's just this like little mailing list post on the WebKit, you know, uh, mailing list. and. Basically, they're releasing some patches that there's not a whole lot of difference like in the front end, but what the major differences are is that WebKit will now be running in sort of sub-processes the way Chrome works, where each tab is in its own process. So they're now baking that into WebKit, so other uh, software that utilizes WebKit, like Safari or Air, could utilize the same sort of performance benefits that come with the sub-process model. Very cool. Well, today I'm going to be talking about information hierarchy, and Jim is going to be talking about Modernizer. Let's check it out. When designing web pages, it's important to give users a clear understanding of the hierarchy of your information. The best way to do this is to emphasize certain parts of your web page and to de-emphasize others. You can do this by using headers and a couple of other techniques that I'm about to show you. The header tags in HTML are numbered H1, H2, and so on, all the way up to H6, and you should use them. They can help provide structure to your page, and they can even help you outline your ideas when you're creating content. A good tip to keep in mind when blocking out your headers and page sections is to indent each header slightly more than the last. You might do this with various border styles and padding, or you might just simply indent the header. Either way, you can more clearly outline your site's structure by making it appear as though more detailed information is underneath the broader section headers above it. Sometimes you'll have a header or some paragraph text that you want to make sure the visitor sees. Here are a few ways you can do that. The most obvious way to draw attention to very important text is to make it bold. The most semantic way to do this is to apply the strong tag. However, for text that's even more important, I like to wrap it in a strong tag or a span tag and then apply a special highlight class. This highlight class sets a yellow background color on the text, making it appear as though it has been highlighted with a yellow marker. If you decide to use either of these techniques, you should use them very sparingly. Another great way to draw attention to a header is to make good use of space. Web pages are usually very cluttered, so if you have an area around your header that doesn't have a lot of visual noise, you can actually draw more attention to it. To learn more about good use of white space, check out episode 3 of Doctype at doctype.tv slash space. HTML features a strong tag, but if you're like me, you'll wish that they had also included a weak tag. If you keep turning up the volume on all the text on your site, eventually you won't be able to cut through the noise when you want to emphasize something else. A great way to tone down parts of your site is to use the emphasis tag and italicize some text. Usually italicized text will appear lighter and won't draw as much attention. Additionally, try changing some text to a light gray color. The lighter the gray, the less important a piece of text will appear. When we come back, Jim is going to show you Modernizer, but first, let's take a look at the Front End Design Conference.
If you're a web person, you're going to want to check out the Front End Design Conference. It's a one-day design conference in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida on July 22nd. There are seven amazing speakers that will be covering a wide range of front-end design topics. There's even a cool after-party and a whole weekend of mad geekery. Jim and I attended last year and it was a blast. Head on over to frontendconf.com and get your ticket. Early bird tickets are just $99 and only $129 later on. We hope to see you at the Front End Design Conference. When building sites using HTML5 and CSS3, it's important to think about the experience for the older browsers. Modernizer is a great tool for that job. When we build websites, we want to use the latest and greatest features. With HTML5 and CSS3 on the horizon, there's a lot of new browsers releasing a lot of new features, and there's some browsers that aren't keeping up. When we use a feature that's not ubiquitous in all browsers, we should consider the experience for the older browsers, whether that's falling back to another solution or omitting a feature altogether from a page. Common practice used to be reading the browser's user agent string, the text that identifies the browser type, and the version. This turned out to be an awful solution because it's impossible to keep track of what features are in what browsers, and some people actually change their user agent for compatibility reasons. It turns out the best solution is to use browser feature detection. Instead of trying to keep a log of which browsers support which features, browser feature detection finds out what features are available by simply asking the browser. For instance, JavaScript APIs can vary from browser to browser. In most browsers, adding an event listener is done using the add event listener method, but Internet Explorer uses attach event. Instead of checking to see if it's IE to decide which method to use, we instead ask the element if it supports add event listener. If it does, we use that. If not, we try attach event. If the browser still does not support attach event, we could try assigning the listener to the elements on click event. It can be a real pain to try to detect all of these features. That's where a tool like Modernizer comes in handy. Modernizer is a script that detects dozens of HTML5 and CSS3 features in the browser. Now it doesn't add support for any of these features, but rather gives you an accurate way to test what features are available in the browser, so you can account for the differences accordingly. Modernizer can tell you if the browser supports HTML5 video, border radius, opacity, multiple backgrounds, CSS transforms, geolocation, local storage, and more. Modernizer makes all of this information available to you in two ways. First, it makes available the Modernizer object in JavaScript with several properties indicating true or false for support. It also adds several classes to your body tag which indicate what features are supported. The CSS classes allow you to make special CSS rules for the cases of features being available or not available in your page. For instance, if you wanted to use the box shadow when available and add a border when it's not, you could define the fallback case for the border, then define another rule scoped under dot box shadow that removes the border and adds the box shadow. Browsers that don't have box shadow capability will not have the dot box shadow defined on the body, so the second rule will be skipped. To use detection in JavaScript, just read the properties of the modernizer object. For instance, if we wanted to use the canvas, we could wrap our code with a check for modernizer.canvas. Modernizer will also do all the JavaScript work necessary to make HTML5 elements stylable in Internet Explorer. Of course, it won't make them functional, but it acts as a replacement for the HTML5 shiv that we talked about in episode 15. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code Doctype3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com that's it for this week until next time be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype tv on twitter and if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of doctype send us an email at questions at doctype TV. We love getting emails. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS, you'll never miss an episode of Doctype. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype. <laughs> <laughs>